Madison Pruitt was a contestant on season 24 of the hit reality TV show, The Bachelor. She made it through to the final round, but was heartbroken when the man she wanted to marry proposed to someone else. However, God had something even better in store. Simisola Okai brings her story. Madison Pruitt Trout entered the spotlight as a contestant on the TV show The Bachelor in 2020. As a finalist, she made it clear that her faith in God was a top priority. Since that experience, Madison has gained a speaking, writing, and social media outreach. She loves helping others sort through what's most important in life. In her new book, The Love Everybody Wants, newly married Madison says the truest love comes from God and is already ours. Well, Madison Pruitt Trout, thank you so much for joining us on TPI. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. <laughs> yes, it's so great to have you here. Uh, most of us were introduced to you on season 24 of The Bachelor. I know I watched your season. I was Team Maddie all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, you experienced heartbreak in front of millions of people. Um, you were looking for love on the show, but now you've written this book called The Love Everybody Wants. What you're looking for is already yours. So I want to ask, what is this love <laughs> yeah. and how did you find yeah. it? Yeah, so this love that is available to every single one of us. I was very intentional with the title of this book to include the word everybody. I went back and forth on titles a lot of times and I decided the love everybody wants because we all crave this love. We all want to be loved. We all want to love. But the coolest thing is, is that we have this radical, reckless, unconditional love that is available to us. All we have to do is receive it and accept it. And um, that is what has completely changed my life. And I had a moment where I had been looking for love, you know, in a guy, in a relationship, in status, in followers, in all of these things that the world gives. And it was leaving me empty and unsatisfied. And I remember having this moment one day in prayer where God just spoke to my heart, Maddie, you were looking for the right thing, just in all of the wrong places. And in that moment, I realized, okay, my my heart can only be made complete by the one who, who created it. And your love, Lord, is the only one that can fully satisfy me. And so it was from that vantage point, I was able to um, really start writing to myself. I started writing this book as therapy to myself and just reminding myself of God's truth and that he's the only one that can truly satisfy us. That's good. You know, a lot of people think that if I just find the love of my life, everything will be perfect. Everything will be great. Why is that not true? Yeah. Because our purpose is not a person and our identity is not a relationship status. And when we try and make someone our everything, we lose everything else. Like he really, Jesus is the only one that can completely save, rescue, and sustain our hearts the way in which they are meant to be. And I had my years, a long, a lot of years, where I was trying to find that in a guy, in a relationship, and it just continued to, to leave me on this endless cycle of never being content, never feeling enough, either feeling too much or not enough, and asking myself the questions, is there something wrong with me? Am I hard to, to love? Like, what's, what's the problem? Why are these relationships not working out? and wondering why I never felt, even when I did get the relationship or I did get you know, the like or the follow or the job or whatever it may be, I still felt unsatisfied. And so I have a whole chapter in this book called He Completes Me and really tackling this idea of no person can satisfy us and complete us, only Jesus can do that. Um, but it is this, this lie that many of us believe that once I find my person, then I'll be purposeful or once I find you know, this relationship, then I'll be happy. And that's just- that's just true. not true. And I, I just want to talk about the importance of prayer. It's so important. You know, a lot of times even people look to celebrities or, you know, anyone else as the litmus test for how to be in a relationship. But prayer is so important. And in your book, you talk about how, how your mom, not only did she pray the wrong ones out, <laughs> yeah. she prayed the right one. And yes. so talk to a parent watching, because yeah. I'm sure there are parents watching their kids in relationships. They're like, oh, no. Yeah. Why is prayer so prayer is so powerful. And I have seen that modeled by my parents. And then I was raised in that. And then I've been able to take that on, you know, for myself, realizing how important 
prayer is because I've seen it change things. I've seen it, you know, protect me and save me from the wrong relationships and situations and also open doors and, you know, give me the the right relationship. And so my mom, she prayed a lot of the wrong ones out. And I finally looked at her and I was like, do you mind praying the right one in? Like I'm ready, you know, to, to find my person. And um, I'm super thankful for a praying mom. And so, yes, I would absolutely just encourage, you know, all parents, there is such power in prayer. And that is the greatest way you can serve your children is by having faith for them and praying for them and cheering them on and speaking life over them. And so I even talk about, you know, in my book, that was something I learned even in dating as I'm evaluating, you know, is this person the one or is this God's best for me? Because I knew I didn't want to settle for less than God's best. Um, And so I would take it seriously to really give it before the Lord and say, Lord, it's not just about what I feel, but is this your will? Is this your best? And to, um, you know, just continue to pray and, and seek God's peace. That's beautiful. Well, now you've been married for almost a year now, yeah. right? And, you know, on the show, you took a, The Bachelor, you took a stance on purity mm-hmm. and you received a lot of backlash for it. Um, but now that you're married, um, you know, on your veil, on your wedding day, you wrote worth the wait. Mm-hmm. So has it been worth the wait now that you're with the one God has for you? Yeah, I, I think that um, one of the biggest blessings in my life was deciding to wait until marriage. And one of the best decisions I've ever made, I think there is this lie that we often believe that choosing a lifestyle of purity and choosing to pursue purity is, you know, missing out. We're missing out on the fun or the things of this world or, you know, our pleasures or whatever it may be. And that has just not been my story. I have seen how pursuing purity has led to God's peace. It's led to protection. Um, It's led to innocence, joy, freedom. And the moments where, you know, maybe I didn't choose that in every which way, whether it been the thoughts that I was thinking or the things that I was watching, that led to confusion and shame and insecurity and all of these feelings and emotions that don't come from God, that God does not want for us. And um, one of the biggest, you know, prayers that I have over this book and over this message is that you know, God would just convict our hearts to come back to a place of purity and pursuing purity and seeing the importance and the value of it and why it's good. It's not God withholding good from us. It's actually God giving good to us. We experience peace and protection um, when we pursue purity. And, um, you know, Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Purity puts us before God to be able to see him in uh, the way in which we're called to. And even if that isn't, you know, someone's story, they can choose from this day forward to make that their story, which is what I love about the God that we serve. He's so redeeming. He's so good. He's so forgiving. And, um, you know, I have not been perfect in that journey, but he has redeemed it and he has purified me and cleansed my heart. And that carries into marriage. You know, I still have to choose purity in marriage. My husband still has to choose purity in marriage. And, um, and that has been one of the biggest blessings, you know, of, of our marriage and, and of our relationship is that Jesus truly is the center the foundation and that it's it's built on a heart of, of purity and trying to please God. If you'd like the story and want to see more content like this, you can make that happen by sharing this video, follow or like us on our social media platforms, subscribe to TPI for monthly updates, become a financial partner. Head over to our website for more details.